Galatians 6, 7 through 18. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. See what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hand. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, to which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, rule to the Israel of God. Uh, from now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. There are some, house, there are some false teachers who have infiltrated the house churches in Galatia. Galatia is where the country of Turkey is today. Uh, these false teachers teach that to be accepted as God's people, all new non-Jewish male believers must be circumcised. This has caused a great division in the house churches of Galatia. Non-Jewish believers now find it difficult to integrate into church life. There are some leaders in these house churches who have voiced their objections against these false teachers who preach circumcision. However, these false teachers are getting popular in the house churches. They are influencing many people. Uh, the small remnant of faithful believers is getting discouraged. The Apostle Paul started these churches over two years ago. Paul writes this letter to the Galatians to encourage uh, these struggling faithful believers and to correct these false teachings. Paul does not mean his words. Paul says that the path of these false teachers is destructive. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Galatians 6, 7-8. You might not be succeeding, but persevere on. Do not lose hope. Carry on your good work. The most important thing is that God sees your work. The false teachers reap destruction for themselves uh, in the long run. Only the Holy Spirit can bring life, can bring eternal life. In preaching faith rather than circumcision, you remind the people of the eternal life that the Holy Spirit brings. Keep sowing seeds for Jesus. It is God who brings the harvest, not us. Paul also tells these faithful followers to love all the people in the house churches, including these false teachers. Jesus gives us the commandment to love one another as he has loved us. John 13, 35. This is a dilemma for them. How can they keep on loving these false teachers who are doing all they can to destroy the house churches? Paul says, take a long view of your efforts. You might not be bearing fruit right now, but it is all in God's good time. Keep on loving the people. Only God will bring the harvest. Uh, Galatians 6, 9 and 10. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. There are many times in our lives in which we persevere to be kind to difficult people in our lives, only, only to find them becoming more hostile. We wonder if our actions are getting anywhere. Will this difficult person ever change their heart? Will our actions bear fruit? How long 
do we continue sowing seed? Uh, this week, I came across an article which shared about how WD-40 is so named. Most of us are familiar with the blue and gold can of WD-40. You may have a can of WD-40 around the house. Does anyone know what WD stands for? It stands for water displacement. Does anyone know what the 40 refers to? That's how many times they tried to develop an effective formula. They failed 39 times, but succeeded on the 40th try. The message is, don't give up. Don't quit when you're tired. Don't quit when you fail. Don't quit when you meet obstacles. Now that summer has arrived, uh, we find that we have lawns to look after. We need to cut the grass, especially when it rains a lot. Uh, this is the story of Jody, who has just brought, uh, bought a house, a new house. She writes it as a response to her reading of Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest, if we do not give up. When I became a homeowner, I found mowing the lawn stressful. Getting my mower started was a feat in itself, not to mention the hour and a half it took to get the job done. As I've grown accustomed to mowing, however, I've actually begun to enjoy it. I find satisfaction in seeing weeds disappear as I work, and I love to admire the beauty of my lawn when I've finished. This experience has caused me to wish that more of life was this way. Um, in most of my other efforts, I don't see immediate results the way I do when mowing my lawn. The friend who seemed excited to come to church with me once doesn't come again. Uh, after I taught them for many months, my students still make the same mistakes they've made before. Temptations I thought I had counted get the best of me yet again. Galatians 6 9 reminds us not to give up on our own efforts to do good. We may see the results of our efforts in this life, but not always. God's timetable is different than ours. Even when we may not see it, God is working to mold us into the image of Christ. God promises that if we don't give up, we are sure to reap a harvest worth the wait. Paul encourages his readers not to give up doing good to all people. God will vindicate them in the long run. As Paul ends his letter to the Galatians, he shares a thought about the false teachers. He tells them that those who preach circumcision are embarrassed about the cross of Christ. Galatians 6 verse 12. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. During the time of Jesus and Paul, the cross is a shameful way to die. The cross is only reserved for hardcore criminals or for enemies of the Roman Empire. The cross does not receive the good standing it receives today. The cross is a scandal. Christians struggle to get over the scandal of the cross as they share the good news of Jesus Christ. It is much easier to preach circumcision than to preach the cross. Paul leaves and breathes the cross of Christ. The grace of God is only made possible through the cross of Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ has come into the world for one mission, the cross. Uh, Paul also has one mission in life, to preach the cross of Christ. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. God the Father sends God the Son to die on the cross to save us. The Father gives up His Son for us. Yet God is doing more than to save our personal souls. God begins His work of recreation and redemption through the work of Jesus Christ, on, uh, through His death and resurrection. The time of the Old Testament has passed. The era of the New Testament has begun. Through Jesus Christ, God is making all things new. 
God has now included non-Jews in his view of redemption and salvation. That is why they do not need to practice circumcision. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule, to the Israel of God. Galatians 6, 15 to 16. According to Paul, this new Israel of God in the New Testament is the church. The church is the people of God in the New Testament. The church consists of all those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ, Jews and non-Jews. The church is not a building or a program. The church is the people God saved. Salvation is corporate as well as personal. In fact, the church is the start of God's new creation. Uh, God is creating a new people for himself. In the last book of the Bible, Revelation, uh, this is predicted. One day, persons from every tribe and language and people and nation will praise God in heaven. We are about to take partake of the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread. This is based on the Last Supper of Jesus with his 12 disciples. Uh, here uh, on our communion table, and I'm just going to show you our communion table. Uh, you will see our communion table here with, with, all, with it all lit up. Um, this is an impression um, of Leonardo da Vinci's famous painting of the Last Supper. And if you look at the painting, uh, well, the original painting, you will count that there are 12 disciples with Jesus. Uh, this means the man who betrays Jesus to the Jerusalem temple authorities um, and the Roman authorities, Judas Iscariot, is eating the Last Supper with Jesus. Jesus feeds Judas at the table. And Jesus seems to know that Judas will betray him. Uh, Jesus makes a reference to Judas. Uh, Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand in the bowl with me will betray me. Matthew 26, verse 23. Just like their leader Jesus, the Galatian Christians break bread with those who preach circumcision. Paul asked them to include all people in their church. This includes the false teachers. Uh, this is only made possible because... Jesus brings all kinds of people together. Jesus reconciles the Jews and the non-Jewish Gentiles together to make up the church. It takes all kinds of people to make up the church. And we are about to celebrate the bread and the cup. Uh, the bread and the cup represents the family meal, uh, which brings us all together. And Jesus invites all people to this family meal. It is an open table. Um, we do not deserve to partake of this family meal. We do not deserve to be saved. Um, yet, uh, and, and Paul even says that we are the enemies of the cross. However, Jesus has died for all people, even those who betray him. Um, people from every uh, tribe and language and people and nation. Tony Campolo shows this story of taking communion while he was growing up. Sitting with my parents at the communion service when I was very young, perhaps six or seven years old, I became aware of a young woman in the pew in front of us who was sobbing and shaking. The minister had just finished reading the passage of scripture written by Paul that says, and this is 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven. 27. Whoever shall eat the bread and drink the cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. As the communion plate uh, with its small pieces of bread it was passed to the crying woman before me, she waved it away and lowered her head in despair. It was then my Sicilian father leaned over her shoulder and in his broken English said sternly, Take it, girl. It was meant for you. Do you hear me? She raised her head and nodded. 
Then she took the bread and ate it. I knew that at that moment, some kind of heavy burden was lifted from her heart and mind. Since then, I have always known that a church that could offer communion to hurting people was a special gift from God. So this meal we are about to partake of today, this meal of the bread and the cup, um, is a special gift from God. Let's participate in it with thanksgiving. Amen. <laughs> 